Okay, so hello, my name's Kevin Briggs. I'm a lecturer in geotechnical engineering at the University of Bath, and I'm here to present a summary of my paper um, evaluating the deterioration of ge geotechnical infrastructure assets using performance curves. So we saw performance curves mentioned in this morning's lecture, and hopefully I'll be able to show you how we are relating this to geotechnical assets, long linear assets. So my co-authors are Tom Dijkstra from Loughborough, Univers <coughs> Loughborough University, and Stephanie Glendening from Newcastle University. And this work fits within a wider framework of what's called the Achilles Project uh, Program. Um, the Achilles Program runs until December 2022, and it stands, it's very long, it stands for Assessment, Costing, and Enhancement of Long Life, Long Linear Assets. And the way we've structured the project and the work streams fits around these performance curves. So we can see a performance curve here in the main image, which I will come back to and show you in different formats. So what is a long linear geotechnical asset? Well, these are major components of the physical infrastructure um, required to deliver critical services over long distances. So what am I talking about? The things I'm talking about the things shown in the images at the base there. So um, flood embankments, canals, railway embankments and cuttings, highway embankments and cuttings. And you can see just from the photos there that these different structures have different users, so they have different performance requirements. They're um, located in a range of geographical areas with different geology, and they're also subject to different weather conditions by the fact that they're long, so they're extending over quite large distances. They have different ages, and they're formed of different materials. So the composition of the material can be variable even when it's the same geological material. And these assets are in various stages of deterioration. So why are we interested in them? Well, we're interested in them because of loss of performance of a single asset can affect a whole network. So it can act as an Achilles heel to the network. How does this relate to smart infrastructure? Well, with smart infrastructure and this growing digital abundance of information, there's an opportunity to transform the management and the maintenance of long linear assets. But this is quite difficult due to many difficulties with geotechnics. For example, the challenges we might face are understanding what to measure. Once we've measured it, how to interpret these measurements, and then how to put this into context in terms of uncertainties and the complex behavior of these assets, which you can consider across different scales. So you could consider behavior of the soil forming an asset. You could consider the performance of the asset as a whole, so a slope. Or you could take that to the next scale and look at root behavior. So within the Achilles project, we've proposed using a curve. And we're using this to evaluate the performance of LLAs over their lifetime. And we're using it to provide a common language to de describe the different types of deterioration at, for different types of assets or different networks of assets. And I think relative to this conference, I think this can help to structure the choice of sensors and strategies for data collection. So just to outline what a performance curve looks like for us, you can see it in the main image here. On the y-axis, we have performance, ranging from low to high performance, where you set some th sort of threshold. This can be very broadly defined and interpreted for different uses. Along the x-axis, in this case, we have asset age. But you could use any, any sort of measure of time, really, or degradation. The curve itself is what we call the upturned bathtub model, and you can see that with the black line and it can be split into four distinct stages. So if we consider an asset, we might consider when it's first constructed, it has an initial stage of bedding in, where performance actually increases. Then it will have its main phase of its life, where it's reliable, where you can have constant performance above the performance threshold, before getting to the third stage where deterioration starts to occur. So here we have reducing performance, and finally, unreliable behavior, where the performance of that asset is below whatever threshold we are setting. So this is the conceptual model um, that we're adopting. So what I'm going to do with this presentation is to describe the, how this fits into our Achilles framework. So I'm going to outline our deterioration framework, which we've set up for geotechnical LLAs. And then to give a more specific story, I'm going to focus on a single asset type. So I'm going to talk. Um, about the behavior of um, infrastructure embankments, and then show how information that we already know about these types of embankments 
can be used to produce a, a generic performance curve, and then with that curve do various things, one of which will be to map different types of transport infrastructure that we have in the UK onto that curve related to age. So what is deterioration? For us, it's, we're using it to describe a change leading to a loss of performance with respect to an expectation. So you can see these four boxes here. At the top, we have drivers, which can be human drivers or environmental drivers of deterioration. Then these change the properties of either our asset or our soil, which can lead to deterioration, which we're looking for evidence for. This deterioration also relates to expectations. So the people who might have expectations of performance are shown, some, just a few, are shown at the bottom there. So it might be customers, it might be operators, owners, or regulators related to those assets. So it could be railways, highways, canals, etc. So this is a very broad in interpretation. Um, and it has these mechanisms, which are these dark arrows, um, which can be acting on the soil slope or network scale. So we can use this framework to contextualize evidence for deterioration and also to plan the gathering of new information. So that's what I've shown here with these three colored boxes. Hopefully you can see at the back, I'll say what's written on them. In the blue one, if we wanted to understand relationships between drivers and properties of deterioration, what we might do is conduct laboratory experiments, um, look at case studies, undertake field investigations, or numerical simulations. So that might be an approach we use to understand that part of the diagram. Um, looking at the red box, if we wanted to look at relationships between deterioration and expectations of the owners of those assets, we might look at information held by those owners, and that's something we're doing. So you might look at maintenance and renewal records, regulatory reports, or even uh, monitoring that they might have in place. There's also an opportunity here for, shown by the yellow box, to use new sensing technologies and methods of gathering and processing data to actually cover all of those um, areas, and that's shown in yellow. So the challenge with geotechnical long linear assets is that the drivers and mechanisms are not fully understood. It's, a bit, it's more complex than uh, looking at a steel structure, for example, because you can't, often you can't see it and it's difficult to um, understand the exact behavior. So what we would want to do is gather evidence. So what I'm, what I'm going to do in this presentation, and there's much more detail in the paper, is basically a literature review relating to an embankment and using that information to try and understand how we might produce a, a performance curve. And then those of you who have sensors or own assets could then adopt this approach um, to apply to whatever need you have um, yourself. So I looked at the um, evidence for embankment deterioration, so 40 plus papers. And when I looked at that, three, a story came out of that relating to three factors that might affect the deterioration of embankments and might help me to um, populate that performance curve. The first was related to loading factors, which were mainly environmental. So we can see from the literature that seasonal pore water pressure cycles, so summer wetting and drying, driving pore water pressure changes, can cause deterioration in earthworks. We can also see pore water pressure increase above historic values, so exceeding a trigger threshold and then you have failures. And finally, um, there's other evidence, more modeling really, projecting the long-term changes in seasonal cycles and extremes and how these in turn might affect deterior deterioration and the rates that that occur. The second um, thing that came out of the literature was that actually these embankments are quite different in terms of the actual intrinsic features of the embankment. So to summarize or we'll put them in three broad categories, in the UK we have Victorian aged loosely tipped fill railway embankments that form our national rail network and these are quite old from the 1830s onwards. The next category, we have these more modern, compacted fill highway embankments from the, that cover our strategic uh, road network from the 1960s, so slightly much younger. And finally, we have these new high-speed railway embankments from the 2000s, so that would be HS1 is what I'm thinking of there, and potentially any new high-speed railways that we have. Finally, there were soil factors. So when looking at deterioration of earthworks and relate, thinking about the soil, again, some stories came out of that, one of which was, people will be aware of this, I'm sure, the strain softening and progressive failure in high PI clays. Um, there was some lab work looking at how clay, uh, clays can disaggregate as they go through um, 
wetting and drying cycles, so driven by moisture changes. And finally, there was um, some centrifuge evidence showing strain accumulation and a kind of downslope ratcheting mechanism in earthworks, um, particularly using clay um, till material. So what we can do is use this type of information, just drawn from the literature, but again, you could get this from sensors or your own information, is here I've plotted a curve that consider, the, consider these factors for um, ULS performance. So if we were to look at the ultimate limit state or stability of that earthwork, what might the curves look like looking, considering these three, three factors? So the way I've drawn my curve here is again on the um, y-axis we have performance between low and high, but by performance in this case, I mean stability. So I have a threshold there, that horizontal dashed line, that's our ultimate stability. And for the x-axis, I've chosen seasonal weather cycles. So thinking about how seasonal weather cycles might cause our slope to deteriorate, or embankment in this case. So curve A is our more generic curve. That's a solid black line. And this is a high plasticity, high PI, clay fill, highway embankment. So we can see in its initial, initially after construction, its performance increases. We have a long period of reliable performance before deterioration and then unreliable behavior where it drops below that threshold. An alternative to that might be curve B, where we have that period of um, reliable performance followed, which is then where, and then the performance drops below the threshold due to some trigger event, such as an extremely wet winter event or a long, prolonged rainfall period. Conversely, if you look at curve C, you can see how as deterioration starts to occur, the owner of the asset might take some action. For example, they might renew the asset or do something to improve performance. So we can see that dashed line, dotted line, goes back up and we get an improved performance. In this case, I guess it would be an improved factor of safety in this context, thinking about ULS. Or for other types of slopes, so thinking about some of the till slopes that in the literature, you might know that actually they're going to follow curve D, which is a reduced performance and a much slower rate of deterioration. So you might treat that asset different to an asset that is your high PI um, earthwork. Finally, in contrast to the, our highway earthwork, just by knowing it's a railway earthwork, we might imagine that it follows curve E. And actually a lot of railway earthworks, um, well, many failed soon after construction, which is what I've shown here, where the performance actually improves and then we have a failure, that dip below ultimate stability. And that's where they've repaired the earthwork and it can then perform through its lifetime. But you can see relative to the highway earthwork, it's going to have a reduced performance and it might fail at an earlier date as a result. So knowing this, we can actually then think about how might we map different assets in the UK onto these curves, thinking about the bedding in, the reliable deterioration, and the unreliable stage. Well, we might consider that the high-speed railway embankments, which are not even 20 years old yet, they might fall within zone A to the left of the chart there, so they might still be improving in performance. The highway embankments might be in the range B there. They're about 60 years old now, or approaching 60 years old. So they're reliable, but actually some of them might start to deteriorate as they get to the end of their lifespan. And finally with C, with many of the old railway embankments on the National Railway Network, they're very old now. Um, so we would consider some of those to be reliable, but for them to be in various states of deterioration across right up until unreliable. So just by knowing the age of the earthworks, we can think about where they might sit on that curve and then think about which ones to prioritize for maintenance, et cetera. So thinking about the theme of this con uh, conference, we can also think about um, data collection strategies and what types of sensors we might need for these different stages of the lifetime of an earthwork. And it will be different. So if we're thinking about the bedding in stage, actually what the things we're trying to sense here or collect data about relate to quality control and commissioning of that asset. So you might be wanting sensors that look at ride quality or look for defects. As we go through the main stage, the reliable stage of the earthwork, we'll be more interested in serviceability monitoring. So we might be in, the owner will be more interested in economic performance. So you might be trying to sense defamation or you might have mechanisms to measure costs and fines that you're incurring. Finally, as we get to the third stage, you might have monitoring with the purpose of planning interventions and replacements. You can optimize that. 
And finally, if you're in that last stage, then you are really thinking about safety monitoring for collapse. So here your sensors are really focused on warning systems. So to conclude, we can see that these curves can be used to identify, plan, and prioritize interventions. And they also provide a common language for visually comparing these different drivers, asset properties, soil properties, and the mechanisms of deterioration. Um, I think they're a good tool for us to use because they can um, be used to identify and communicate the need for additional information or improved understanding, so need for new research. And in this case, I populated a curve with information from the academic literature, but you could use it to plan, collect, and interpret large volumes of data, um, which could include asset information, performance data, or information from sensors. Okay, thank you.